munchkins and viewers alike. It's me Munchie and welcome back to one of the last bad cage reviews of this tiny tales that I have done. Today I am going to be reviewing none other than The Clubhouse. So for those of you who don't know this series, welcome on in. I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing this cage right here while also providing my knowledge and information about the current updated hamster care and why these cages might not be suitable. Now with any review, remember guys, it's all opinionated, but there is hard evidence out there that better hamster care is the way to go as well as we need to encourage other people to understand that small animals need much more space than previously thought. Hamsters and the United States need at least 450 square inches or more. And depending on if your hamster seems aggravated, frantic, and or stressed, upgrading the hamster's enclosure is the best thing possible for it. So hamsters, such as my new baby steering hamster named Crackle here, who right now might seem very small to you, but when he grows up, he's gonna be needing a lot of space as is because he is a Syrian hamster and Syrians tend to need bigger enclosures. So it's always been a problem that pet stores sell cages such as this small one here for just any species of hamsters they sell. Otherwise, a small enclosure can actually stress them out and hamsters are prone to getting easily stressed and can die easily from stress-related issues, especially if they are confined here. Just as a note to anybody who has a small enclosure right now, to think about looking into the updated care that is trying to be pushed out and the science and study that goes into monitoring these guys. Besides these guys running for at least five miles an hour in captivity a night on their wheels. Isn't that right, Crackle? Yes, cutie patootie here. So today, Crackle here is going to be testing out the newest cage. But this video is not meant to be mean to anybody who currently uses them. But I hope you do understand, once watching this video, what we are trying to encourage others to do. To have good husbandry and enrich your hamster's life. Even though they live only an average of two to two and a half for Syrians and most dwarfs, Roboroskis live about up to four years, possibly, if they have a good, long, healthy life. Life, but you want to correctly enrich your environment for your small animal to give it the best life it could possibly have. Restricting it because you don't want to upgrade or any other reason and not providing it enough enrichment is frowned upon if you do not wish to treat your animal the way that it needs to be treated. So a lot of these guys are actually considered throwaway pets, but for me, being the hamster lady on this channel, I am fascinated with all living things, especially hamsters because they are known to be those throwaway pets that nobody really cares a lot about after a certain amount of time. But for these guys, I like to just regularly foster and rescue them from bad situations or just homeless situations or if they have special needs. In this case, I adopted Crackle after he came to us from a surrender that was trying to get rid of a mother hamster and a litter of pups. So without further ado, let's open up the box and tell you a little bit more about what's inside. Good God, everybody's on their water bottles all at once. So before I completely ruin this box here by trying to open it, I want to tell you there's two cages that I have yet to review, and that's because they're not out yet. And I really wish Tiny Tails wouldn't push them out, but they're going to. They're definitely going to, but they are going to be the barn and the amusement park. So let me show you what's inside the box. This is very tiny like i said previously 450 square inches should be minimum in the united states and other places like germany they are well into a thousands just because they understand small animal care a lot better and have more respect for the small pocket pets but here in the united states we are trying really hard to get out good quality products when opening up this cage and showing you guys some people have asked me, well, can I add this to my main cage? And that is perfectly fine. If you want to add another tiny tails, like a small little area to a main cage that is at least 450 square inches, kind of like this bin back here that currently is housing Spitfire, my aggressive foster hamster in it, then yes, you can totally add, say a tube that's the appropriate size for your size animal and connect it as long as it is just an attachment and not a main place for them to be in. So currently there's six cages on the market right now and people have actually asked me 
see if it would be okay if they could just buy them all and connect them and make that amount of square inch for their hamster. But if you notice here, this height for a small cage like this will not provide you, as well as the other cages, much room for you to add accessories into, say like for a big cage back here. If you had a Syrian, you would have to buy bigger wheels and bigger hides because they can't fit into anything smaller and or it becomes very uncomfortable for them. So you are given these really small wheels and the wheel that comes with it is only six inches. So that is definitely not good for a Syrian past a certain age. And you might not like the way this wheel sounds because wow, this one is a wheel that actually squeaks. You might get frustrated with the wheel and might have to purchase another wheel. And of course they come with these size tubes that says fits most Syrians on the box. Now, when you are purchasing a cage like this for the first time hamster owner, you might not understand the size difference between a dwarf hamster, which could fit inside these tubes, and a Syrian. So most of my Syrians can't actually fit inside here, even though the box claims most can. Mine sure as heck can't. So with this special one, you are going to be getting kind of a loft-like area. And I am just saying right now, this is the most shallow loft-like area I have seen. I believe KT does it better when it comes to having a tiny little secret hideout loft area above. So let's try to open it here so I can show you. It looks like a toilet. I don't know why. It just does. So this toilet-like hide is that shallow right there. As you can tell here, this is a very tiny little cage. So it's kind of like a shoebox size, say like a shoebox for uh, men's size shoes. And that is basically it. That's where a lot of hamster owners put their hamster in and decide not to do any research and or to upgrade. Now with people who go and shop for hamsters for the first time, they see a cage and they think that's it. That's the only thing that they're gonna be needing and we're gonna call it good and leave it alone. A lot of the times KT, just just like the tiny tails lines want you to get more cages because they're supposed to be attached together and you're not supposed to leave them in something like this. So back in the 90s and 2000s, there were some observations being done on hamsters and their behaviors and stress was a really big factor that they focused on. They noticed that with hamsters in labs that they would get easily stressed in smaller enclosed environments and this stress levels caused health issues. So I'm gonna start putting this together as I'm talking. It is nice to see that I did not get a broken cage this time, but this plastic, even though it feels a lot harder than the KT Critter Trail cages, which which is the exact same cage that Tiny Tails is modeling from, it doesn't look too bad. Now, before I put the top on, because I just realized that, I'm gonna be putting on the sides and I'm gonna put the wheel in. And of course, it comes with a very weird style water bottle with the nozzle pointing down. Every water bottle in the other cages I reviewed leaked on me, so I'm not gonna take any chances with this and say that most likely, if you were to buy a cage like this, the exact same one maybe, that you're gonna have to be replacing this water bottle in the near future because it just tends to leak. So I'm gonna attach the wheel right there and I just spun it because it's on the wire so you guys can listen to it and listen how it spins. Some of these are not made very well. So most likely you're going to be at night hearing this if some little hamster runs on it and the cage is gonna be vibrating. A very big downside because you wanna be able to sleep. You don't wanna be putting your hamster away in the closet or other places where you can't see and interact with your hamster. Now we're gonna be putting on these sides here. So I should be looking at the instructions here because I wanna make sure that I put this on correctly. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it so the tubes are on this side. So let's just pop out one of these. <laughs> Whoops, that went behind me. Latched it on there. Very easy and simple. So let's go and look at the instructions here. It looks like it wants me to attach some of the tubes. It looks like it says combine two tubes together so it resembles something like that. There, both of them together. So it looks like I'm going to be coming from this side and attaching it like so. So now we have some tubes inside here. I'm just going to go ahead and attach this to the cage 
So the worst part about this water bottle and the way it's attached is you have to put it on at this weird angle and these wires are so shallow. There's not enough wires. So you can only put it in specific places. And for me, I'm noticing this is like the most trickiest water bottle. If I start putting it even lower, it's gonna be a problem. But I think I got it there. There we go, it's supposed to go like that. Next, it looks like it wants us to start putting the top together. So I'm gonna set the top on here, and then it looks like it wants me to attach this to the end here. How do I do this? I think it goes in that way. Yes. Like so. Ooh, tricky part. This one has me putting four tubes together. This looks like the weirdest angle ever, but looks like I'm gonna start with the construction of this. Ooh, there we go. So it's gonna start off like that. Oh, there we go. And just by putting these together, imagine trying to clean these, taking them on and off. That would be very annoying to me. Putting them on, taking them off, and having to just clean this all because parents need to understand, and kids too, that you need to be able to clean the tubes, otherwise there is urine and feces that the hamsters are walking on constantly. And for smaller cages like this, you will have to do weekly deep cleans. Now there is a thing as spot cleaning, but for a smaller enclosure, spot cleanings are almost non-existent and usually it would be a full-on deep clean just because everything would be saturated in their own filth by that time. Unlike, say, a big cage, as you see behind me, which has Spitfire in. She is currently right now in a big enclosure that has a lot of bedding in there that I spot clean weekly and only deep clean monthly. And because she likes to run on her wheel right there, she has a dirty wheel. So usually with my weekly spot cleanings, I just clean the wheel and put it back in. However, you're probably gonna have to be cleaning this wheel more often than you think, because this is the only enjoyment that they have in here. Because, do you see any other places they can go besides just go to their water, go to their wheel, and just slightly run around inside here? Oh, that's right, the top. They'll go to the top if they can fit inside of it. Did I do this wrong? I don't know. Okay, so let's just try to see if we can fix this, whatever I just did. 11 minutes later. Oh, uh, trying to angle four little tubes so that it fits is kind of annoying. That That is just gonna be a weird angle for your hamster to run into. Ugh, God, that is such a weird angle. Okay, so it's very tight right here with the tubes. I got them to latch. It looks like they're in there secure. Now the next part is just attaching the top part, which is over on the edge that looks like it's about to fall off. That end goes in first, so it can sit, you push it in, and voila, the cage. It is complete. So let's have a hammy test it out. Being put into a new environment, yes, the hamster is obviously going to get stressed as is. So what you're about to see, the hamster is probably going to get freaked out because it's in a new place. So usually for hamster owners, you want to wait at least 24 hours for the hamster to settle into their environment here. But the thing is with something like this, they are going to panic no matter what because it is not enriching enough for them. Eventually they will get used to it, but they're gonna be very stressed. Like Spitfire gear. Spitfire's issues could be behavioral, but a lot of the times cage aggression in dwarfs is a very serious problem that means that they were put into a small environment, weren't given enough space as a growing pup, which baby hamsters are called pups. So if anybody watching out there does have a hamster, especially a dwarf hamster, that one of the first signs of you interacting with your hamster is it lunging at you, that is aggression and that hamster unfortunately cannot be helped. All you can do is care for your hamster and love your hamster and watch from a distance. But today, we're not gonna be watching from a distance because Crackle is going in here. So let's see how he likes it. So Crackle went into the tiny tails without much of a problem. All of my other hamsters exhibited some signs of stress, but for him, he was just curious. He was wondering what everything was. The reason why I loved Crackle and picked Crackle out of the surrendered Ginger's litter was because he was so docile, very nice, very kind and slow. And I really loved that about him. So he did not freak out too badly in this cage at all, except for in the tubes. But 
first he got on the wheel and he, even though he looked very small in my hands, he was too big for it. Hamsters' spines should not curve and if it curves, it causes a lot of back discomfort and pain. It's like if anybody were to lift up anything heavy and sprain their back, that is what a hamster with a curved spine feels like if they have to run on a wheel all the time like that. And of course he didn't want to really get on it and run around because he was so exploring. And the next thing to note about cages like this is that the front entryway is one of the only places besides the secret loft compartment that you can interact with your hamster. I showed a clip of me trying to get Crackle and even though he is a small hamster, having a bigger hamster like a bigger adult Syrian in here trying to get them out would have been an even bigger struggle. If you can't freely move your hand around in an enclosure to interact with your hamster, that is something that is going to cause an issue for parents and children out there who want to interact with their hamster because they might get bored and don't like the idea of trying to stick their hand in. But unfortunately for Crackle here, he did not want to go up the tubes. He actually turned around in the tubes, which looked really uncomfortable for him, and he went back. So I had to put him in the top and slowly close the top. Thankfully, he did fit, but any bigger hamster, I don't think I would have closed the top on them. But for Crackle, I did, and he made his way back down, but at the weirdest angle, and you can tell the tube part was the most uncomfortable thing for him, and he did not want to be in them. So I'm so sorry, Crackle, I had to make you do it. You were my quote unquote guinea pig in this whole project, but I do appreciate that you were helping me show the internet why these cages are so gosh darn awful. And now the comparison of a tiny cage to a much bigger cage, which I think the viewers out there would probably appreciate a lot more knowing that this is an option for you guys. So you don't have to choose the expensive route by getting multiple tiny little cages where you can actually fit some pretty cool items inside your bigger cage. Now this cage right here, this is a bin cage that's at least around 450 to 500 square inches of unbroken floor space that I purchased from Target. This bin in total was around $16. It's currently raised to $16.99 last I checked, so it is getting more expensive, but all I did was just cut the top off, made ventilation, and or you can poke a bunch of holes in with a power drill or a power tool. You just gotta make sure it has enough airflow so it doesn't become stuffy and humid because you don't want your hamster to have a humid enclosure. They can overheat, which is better. So if I take this down because you saw the size comparison, this is way bigger and more appropriate. So that's what the lid currently looks like. And inside is my foster hamster Molly, as you can probably see right there. You can add much more things in here than you would be able to with a smaller enclosure here. As well as if you open it up, guess what? I can interact with Molly. Molly, come here, sweetie. Hi, Molly. Hello. I was able to easily pick up Molly here and be able to interact with her. She doesn't like to be held. She's one of those hamsters that has anxiety attacks when you pick her up. So I'm just gonna set her back in here. But look at all of this space you can see me just putting my hands into without a problem. I can pick up her bridge, put down her bridge, pick up her wheel, which I don't want to, put it back in, pick up one of her hides, check her hide if she was hiding in there, put it down. I can get to her food bowl, put it back in. I can check her water, which guess what? non-leaky water bottle, wonderful. And also I got this from PetSmart as well. And the colorful bedding. If you wanted to make a theme cage, there you go kids, make your own theme cage. I love making fall, Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, all these really cool themes with the Carefresh bedding from PetSmart. And also Petco has a new Carefresh line too. They have the pinks, blues, and purple bedding. But yeah, you can do so much more with just this. This is just a basic setup. But for any personal pet owner out there that wants and loves hamsters, this would be the best type to go for. But this is not the best spin for, say, like a Syrian, because Syrians, in my own opinion and experience, they need at least 600 square inches or else they get very bored and they want more. So what you can do in this situation is if Molly here was getting bored, you switch out, say, the hives, provide, oops, I didn't know there's stuff in there, Molly, sorry about that, provide newer hides, replace old and chewed up chew toys, make
Make sure to provide enough chew toys. Make sure that you provide different hides. See which hide she likes. This is her favorite hide right here, so I don't really ever want to move it. But for everything else in here, I do move it. I rearrange, I make it look different. And she does enjoy it. She does burrow, she does dig. She does her little Molly thing. So a side-by-side -side comparison, you can tell which enclosure is actually better and more suitable for a hamster because their stress levels are lower. They're not as agitated when you try to interact with them. And this would be a great beginner's choice for any parents out there. And it'll be much better than a Tiny Tails death trap, as you see here, which is not suitable for not even a mouse. I say bad in the beginning of my title because I know it's gonna be bad. It's not the right size enclosure. And people think that a cage such as a Tiny Tails cage is suitable and fine. So thanks guys so much for watching. If you did like the video, hit like to show your support. I do not, for the love of me, recommend this cage. And cleaning it is going to be a nightmare for you if you decide to get it. Comment down below with anything you like to say about the video, please. And subscribe if you are new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family. And thanks guys for all the support. I do appreciate it. But for now, the tiny tail line has currently ended. So I hope you enjoyed the reviews. Till next time, bye-bye.